So I thought we'd look at the internet weather for this week, uh, March 22nd. Uh, this is the top 10 most pro ports. Uh, so this is where we see, you know, irrespective of who, how many people are scanning or how many individual source IPs we see scanning, just the sheer volume of scanning activities. So, you know, a single device could scan billions of IP addresses and it's gonna be counting the billions as opposed to, um, you know, one IP doing it. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, but uh, the top 10, there's not much different that we haven't talked about in previous uh, shows. We see Telnet, 23 TCP, 445 TCP is your Microsoft Windows file sharing, um, you know, notably for Conficker and the Eternal Blue exploits. Um, uh, you know, that's a, a very common port that's leveraged uh, for exploitation to take over Windows machines. Uh, 22 TCP is um, your SSH, which is very similar to Telnet. Uh, but, you know, it's encrypted. Uh, the 443 TCP is your HTTPS, which is just usually scanning for web services and things of that nature, or websites. <clears throat> 1433 TCP is your Microsoft SQL Server. Um, we've seen that this stays pretty high. People looking for Microsoft SQL Servers that maybe are unpatched or have very simple passwords that can be brute force guessed. Um, so you see that quite frequently scanning against those. Um, 81 TCP is well known for um, uh, uh, some of the smaller embedded uh, uh, web servers. I think there's the go ahead HTTP web server that has a well known vulnerability that typically listens on port 81 uh, and a lot of embedded uh, Linux devices, notably. So, a lot of that scanning could be related to that. And that's used frequently in a lot of IoT devices that might have um, uh, like security cameras, things of that nature, you know, those. Um, is security camera appliances you can buy that you, know, you can hook up 12 cameras to them and monitor your house or whatnot or your business. Uh, port 80 TCP, again, web. Uh, this could be various scanning for types of websites or maybe even brute forcing, password guessing, um, you know, into some various sites. Uh, and then the one that I did highlight here is 6379 TCP, which is Redis. Um, that's a database server uh, of a sort. So we're going to take a closer look at that. And then 3389 TCP is remote desktop protocol, um, which allows remote uh, desktop sharing. So this is a frequently targeted port uh, because if they can brute force password guess their way in, they can take over and log into that machine uh, with an interactive um, user interface, just like you're sitting in front of your Windows machine. In terms of the most sources probing, which I tend to kind of focus in more when you look at the most sources probing, it means you've got a lot of individual source IPs all scanning on a particular port uh, and protocol uh, at the same time, which usually means you've got some sort of botnet in operation uh, that's telling them, hey, you know, you 2,000 bots of mine, I want you to all go scan port 8728 or 8291 or whatever. Um, so let's take a look at some of these. We talked about most of these ports already. 8080 TCP is also a, a very well-known um, uh, uh, management uh, web management interface, typically used on Tomcat, a lot of other types of uh, middleware for HTTP listen with administrative interface on port 8080, so that's frequently targeted, uh, which is probably what they're going after there. Uh, 8728 and 8291, we're gonna take a much closer look at that in a second. Um, and then 2457 UDP is kind of an anomaly that's up in the chart here. Um, and we're going to take a look at how that one's been doing. Uh, we've talked about it in previous weeks, and I think probably others on the show as well. Um, this is not really a security issue, but we'll talk about why this port that we've never really seen before prior is uh, up in the uh, top 10 now. So first, let's take a look at 6379 TCP, which is the Redis server. Redis, if you're not familiar with it, is um, it's an in-memory in database. So it basically keeps the entire database structure, small databases, key value stored databases in memory. It's very super fast, um, has a very um, uh, efficient query uh, syntax, their own uh, protocol that they use to query it that's very tight uh, and small and allows you to query this type of server very quickly. Um, it's targeted a lot because there, you know, there's certain types of databases that people have that are not uh, gigantic, but have enough data that can be stored all in memory um, and uh, are targeted in that fashion. I am showing a 90 day chart here just to kind of show, first of all, I'll mention that there's some weird spikes here and you're probably all wondering what are these spikes? 
Um, these are actually uh, some good guys, let's say, uh, like Census and Shodan, who go out and they pull the internet on periodic basis. And um, that's what you're seeing here. I can't remember if it was Census or Shodan when I looked at this particular one, but they come along at a very regular interval on a particular day and they scan like crazy to see, um, you know, which ones are, you know, what's out there listening on this port. Um, but uh, they're not doing it on a continual basis. They're basically hitting it every whatever, seven days or so, maybe it looks like. There is kind of a, if you kind of look at the shape here, there is a, a pattern where it kind of dips here a little bit, relatively speaking. We had a little bit of a, a rise, uh, maybe around the 21st of February to the 28th, dipped down again. And it's kind of coming back up again. You know, generally when you look at the trend line here, of how filled this in, in this is. This, uh, this little gap in here is just an anomaly where we have some missing data, so you can just ignore that. Um, that's not that it went away completely. Um, that's just a, uh, an error on our part. Um, but in any event, you can see it's trending upward uh, in general. And um, so I thought we'd take a closer look at Redis in general and what these probes kind of look like uh, when we take a look. I do have a chart here that kind of talks about the Redis protocol. They have this RESP protocol that they've created of their own, which I wasn't really familiar with, but it's a very goofy, um, I've never seen a protocol like this before. It, they do mention it listens on port uh, 6379 TCP, which is the one we're talking about here. And um, it is a TCP based protocol, but they use a very awkward syntax where they basically push, you know, a number of uh, things to expect and then um, a dollar sign with four, which says my next field is going to be four characters, then dollar sign six, and it's going to be six characters, and then you get the answer back. So it's a very tight little weird language, I guess, protocol that they have of their own. So I kind of looked this up only because I looked in our honeypot to see, well, what do we see in the honeypot scanning? Um, and when I saw it, I was like, is this RESP? And that's why I went, I brought this up to kind of show them this, that it is RESP, uh, the RESP protocol that's happening here. So you'll see they're sending one parameter in, it's four characters in length, and they're querying for info. So this is a query, this is from our honeypot. And I'd show a couple of examples. The majority of the ones I see are probes that look like they're just looking to see, is this a Redis server? And if so, give me some basic info um, back about the server. So that's what we see most often. Uh, on occasion, we do see some other ones here. So you can see this one, uh, it's a different query, very similar to the syntax that we saw before, where they're saying, I'm going to send you three parameters. So the first one is set, the next one is back one, which I'm not quite sure what the back one is. And then the next one is 63 characters in length. And it's this long string here, which if you're familiar with Linux or Unix, you'll recognize this as um, a cron tab entry. So this, um, you know, uh, star slash 20 means I think run every 20 minutes on every single day. And it's going to say go to curl uh, or use curl to go fetch this uh, file here, which is pm.sh, and then pipe that into the shell script, the shell um, interpreter uh, so that it will execute it. So every 20 minutes, it's going to try to fetch this. And uh, assuming that it's able to, this, this exploitation. Uh, method that they're trying to use here uh, takes and it actually inserts this into the cron tab of the uh, the vulnerable Redis server. Um, I took a look at this. Um, this is a long script, so I didn't want to print it, paste it onto the screen. But the long and short of it, uh, what it does is it goes and fetches an additional payload called CC from a a dot power of wish dot com. Power misspelled. I'm, I might be. I'm not sure how I say this word, but um, it's an A dot instead of D dot. And um, it actually turns out to be this particular sample here, which I have the SHA sum, and it's a Skidmap uh, crypto miner Trojan. So Skidmap is, um, it's a, uh, within the past couple of years, it's a uh, uh, cryptocurrency mining Trojan that's become somewhat popular. Um, it's a Linux-based uh, cryptocurrency miner and it has some interesting evasive techniques uh, that it uses to hide itself on the system. So uh, in any event, kind of interesting, you know, if you're uh, interested in this kind of stuff, you know, um, you know, running a honeypot like uh, 
we've done in certain parts of the network and and collecting and seeing what people are trying to do it kind of helps you get some perspective about you know okay they're scanning on this but what are they really trying to do so um you know these are some good examples of exactly what they tried to do the redis has been exploited uh the instances of redis has, it's been at least oh, like probably about a year now um to install cryptocurrency miners right and then the and I think even the Microsoft SQL Server, there's an uh, there's a vulnerability that allows for, uh, I, I guess the attack vector is to install uh, cryptocurrency miner, right? So you have two ports mm -hmm. on the top ten that are, uh, you know, targeting devices to really install a cryptocurrency miner. Uh, that's you know to me that's kind of interesting because, you know, probably ten years ago this type of exploit would never occur for anything like that. Just kind of uh, right. changing the times right. as as the times change, you know, um, I guess things get exploited for different reasons. Right. Ten years ago, they were probably scooping them up and, you know, trying to steal each individual person's, um, you know, passwords and banking credentials. You know, there's a lot of like keystroke loggers and things right. like that, credential harvesting going on back in the days of botnets, probably 10 or so, maybe even more ago. Um, what I would say about cryptocurrency is you're right. Your observation is right. And I would also say, can you blame them? Because when you right. look at like Bitcoin, especially, right, you look at it yeah. a year ago versus today, um, just how much, you know, it's increased. I, I don't remember if it's right. 10 times or what, but it's gigantic. It's a, it's a great yeah. investment. I wish I knew. Hindsight 2020, right? But um, so you can't really blame them for, for um, you know, using compromised devices for that purpose, um, even if they're not necessarily great um, horsepower devices that they've acquired, a lot of times you can get a whole bunch of really small ones, or they can, get a whole bunch of really small uh, embedded devices and put them into a pool of cryptocurrency miners. And, um, you know, collectively they can, you know, solve some of the cryptocurrency challenges uh, and, uh, you know, get portions of cryptocurrency as part of that. So right. um, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, definitely. We've talked about this on the show, or at least I did, I guess, last time, I think. We, we've seen kind of since the um, December time frame here, this has been pretty quiet. And then around December 7th or 8th, maybe, um, we saw a big spike in scanning on 8728 and 8291 TCP. Then it went away. And since that time, it's really kind of resurged here. Um, this is uh, a 120 day view of what that activity looks like. And uh, you'll also notice that these two ports are scanned pretty much in concert with each other. So, you know, the bots or devices that are scanning, they don't just scan one port or the other. They're both basically scanning both of them at the same time. This is a stacked chart. So that's why you're going to see uh, pretty much equivalent amounts of scanning at the same times for both ports, and then it also decreases relatively um, to the same amounts. And um, this is the uh, MicroTik router. Uh, over historically, it's had a lot of various vulnerabilities. And these two ports are the WinBox and the um, API ports for uh, the MicroTik routers. There's uh, actually some people have some pretty good write-ups on some of these uh, techniques people are using to exploit these. There's various vulnerabilities for MicroTik routers. Um, MicroTik is kind of more of a consumer embedded router than uh, you know a commercial grade one, but it is widely used, especially internationally. Um, I don't know if it's so much used in the US that much, but it definitely is. Um, but there's a lot of them deployed worldwide. Um, it's a pretty popular manufacturer of a, of a home router or a Soho type router. So uh, that's why these are being targeted right, from that perspective. And there's a lot of worms that have come out for these as well, where, you know, once they compromise the device, the malware that they implant on the device goes and tries to find other ones of its own kind to infect those as well. So um, there's a lot of wormable behavior going on in, in this activity. And then the last one that's not really a security vulnerability is uh, port 2457 UDP. We talked about this as well uh, on the show, maybe last time I was on, or I'm sure Matt or some of the others of the uh, uh, people as well who've done the internet weather. Uh, Valheim is a game. And um, 
you might be wondering, well, why does a game show up as scanning activity? Why would, you know, people, a whole bunch of people playing a game all of a sudden show up to look so much like a botnet? Uh, well, it's not a botnet. It is a game. It's just kind of an artifact of how uh, the Steam client works from Valve. Um, and I'll take a closer look at that. Uh, one observation I would make about this is that you can see prior to maybe February 6th or so, uh, there was no activity, zero activity of anybody really scanning or utilizing this port. Um, but since that point, it really ramped up and it has since kind of trailed down a bit, uh, which is an interesting observation. Maybe Valve might want to watch our show and they get, although I'm sure they have a lot more telemetry than we do. Um, but this is um, uh, a game, it's very popular now, and um, it does listen on port 2457, which I've highlighted here, 2457 UDP. Uh, they mentioned that you would have to open down the firewall. And the reason this looks like scanning is because there's a lot of uh, servers out there for this particular game. And the way that the client works, uh, which I kind of have a picture of here, is it gets a list of all the servers that are out there. And then what it does is it goes and it tries to ping or hit each and every one of those servers on port 2457 UDP and try to figure out what map is currently playing on there and what is my latency when I go to talk to it. So that me as the gamer, I can look and see, oh, there's only, you know, this server's not full and they're playing this particular map and I have really good response time to it, so I'll go to that one. Um, but when you have, you know, uh, thousands of servers potentially out there in the list, it can look like the client is scanning thousands of IP addresses on the same port and then multiply that by the many thousands of players. I think if we go back here, you'll see that there's around 11,000 unique to 12,000 unique scan sources. So you've got 11 to 12,000 players that are all doing that, you know, on some semi-regular basis during the day. And you can see this is a very diurnal pattern of, you know, it peaks during the day and goes up you know, down uh, every 24 hours. So it's, this is basically gaming activity um, uh, and not anything to worry about. But when we first looked at it, I was like, what is this port? Because when we first saw it, I know uh, myself and some others were like, well, this is kind of odd because this is not associated with anything that we actually know. Um, you know, we're looking at it very early uh, February here. And, uh, but that's exactly what this activity is. So um, anyway. Nothing to worry about with that one. Um, just an interesting observation and in how not to get, I guess, necessarily tricked into thinking that everything is malicious that shows up um, on the, uh, you know, in terms of scan activity. Uh, scanning isn't always necessarily bad um, or it's not always, you know, uh, what it seems to be when at first uh, blush, so. Matt doesn't play this one? <laughs> I don't know. That's a good question. He might. I'm not sure. I will say, I think I, um, I mentioned on a previous show that back when this first started, you know, I do play some games and I run the Steam client. Um, it's a bad offset for me to tell everybody that. But, uh, and I noticed like a lot of my friends that I'm friends with in my friends list were playing this game called Valheim. I mean, what is this game? But I would see like tens of friends of mine playing all together at the same time. So I was like, this is, what is it? Why is everybody so interested in this? But I guess it's very popular. I'm not really, I haven't played it myself. Yeah.